Hello there, and this week I'm going to repair my bicycle lights. So I've been working on it for all day, and it's all washed out. So here it is. This is my bicycle light. It has four SPG Cree LEDs. So it's uh, run at one amperes. It's about 900. To be generous, it's like 900 to 1000 lumens. I think it's more like 900. I had a friend in uh, USA who made this for me. He actually made this out of a block of aluminium. So <laughs> With his CNC machine. It was a CNC machine from Harbor Freight. I don't know, don't remember what it's called. But it's one of those uh, for China that wasn't so expensive back in 2009. Yeah, so this goes on the sides like this. And then you can then, uh, hold on, you can adjust here. Just uh, get it around the handlebars like this. And then it will adjust itself. But just uh, turning this. This is something called delrin. This material. This was also a block of delrin. It's like a waxy type of plastic. So, and I really like that because then it's not so hard to turn on the metal. So yeah, it's very nice. He did a really good job. He didn't take much money for it. The problem with this light was that I uh, play with it with my power supply and then the, the magic smoke appeared when I put too much current through it. So I replaced the regulator, the oh, oh, constant shit. current regulator. <laughs> but the problem was that uh, the microcontroller wasn't working. So I bought new ones. So let's have a look at that. And it's supposed to regulate the uh, intensity. There's also a switch, I have to find that. I don't know why it's so difficult. <laughs> Maybe it's so many years between uh, the days I tried changing this. So let's get this on. You can see the battery. This is the cooling part, it's like an L fin. So, now it's safe. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Wait, and this one is. I 
think this is the temperature sensor. No, that's this one. These are for the LEDs. We can disconnect that also. So. Yeah, so that's the bad thing of having two equal connectors. Is that you never know if you're going to connect them incorrectly. So. There's a little hack here because. Uh, yeah, I looked in the schematic and uh, I got it wrong. The, the idea here is that you plug in the charger in here and then this battery is going to take the charge and uh, the LEDs are not going to get powered. So, so you break the connection to the LEDs or the LED driver. This looks a bit more difficult than I thought. So. Uh, looks like I have hacked it together. I thought I was just going to remove this one and then I was done. But it looks like I have to actually patch it. So. I can't get the damn thing to desolder. So I'm sitting here thinking maybe I have glued it or something. Because it's stinging my eyes and it smells like cyan or acrylite. Or super glue. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is turbulence because I'm holding this uh, plate there. What's the damage? Let's have a look. Ah, it must be a via something. Yeah, but it looks like I ever had some glue or something there, so. Oh, that was silly. Square vias with tin in them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. So you can see also the hack here. See, we have uh, resistors. Uh, it's not very pretty. Um, I think this is the ground or power to get uh, a pull up on these pins here. I think. And then you have one over there. So I have to completely reverse engineer this and uh, fix those errors because I don't think I've. Uh, written it down what the problem was. I, I thought I had done that but that was the other project so, because this was one of my f first projects I did at home in 2009 and then I kind of put it away and then <laughs> the dark hours came again in the fall and winter so in 2010 I made it again or finished it so Yes, I have made two boards. I have that early bird board, if you can call it that. So you can see it's a bit different. The thought was uh, something I had learned at work that uh, <laughs> so it was always good to have extra footprints, even though they weren't in use. But uh, you know, it takes up space though. So. So the idea here was that you didn't need a microcontroller, you just used the pot to control the uh, input of the regulator, which is this one, which also goes here. And uh, you can see also this was my... Uh, yeah, so that was the idea. So, uh, and you could then uh, switch out the uh, pot, and do some hack and get the microcontroller instead. So my second board I decided to just use the microcontroller so but then I found out later I think that uh, we had some problems with uh, missing uh, sorry we had some problems with missing pull-ups or something here because this connector here is going to the uh, you see that little bugger there 
I can show you in picture. This guy is actually a chip with two thresholds. It's it's a thermostat actually. So it has two trip points. The first one is uh, like warning, like 50 degrees I think. So such that the lights go down, and then if the for some reason this is uh, this light is in a closed environment like a yeah in your, in your rucksack or in your bag, and it's on, and um, yeah on the 60 degrees is because this battery is uh, you you don't want more than 60 degrees C on your batteries. Anyway, so yeah, so this is uh, just hacked together <laughs> with uh, five cells of uh, lithium ion, uh, 18650, 18650 cells, and uh, you can see them there. And then we have like just a space I should keep it snug in there. So, but now that I look at it, I don't like this cable. But I told you that last time. <laughs> These are, uh, I think it's LED deal, or is it Sarklow optics? Not sure. So, and you can also see the aluminium L profile. So this goes down and then this way underneath the battery. And uh, I have a little plastic spacer glued between the battery and the heat sink, such that the heat won't go into the battery but out on this uh, thing so this L profile is uh, screwed tight here so I'm oh, sorry yeah so what I'm gonna do now I think I'm gonna sleep on this and then uh, continue because uh, this was much worse than I thought I thought it was bang bang um, therefore um, indicating low battery and uh, yeah, indicating low battery and then the failure if it overheats. So I've tested that. I put the device on its head such that it can't dissipate heat and then I let it on for like, I don't think it's 20 minutes or so. And you can see what I've done here. It's actually uh, epoxy glue, which I've, uh, if you if you stir it before it uh, sets, you, yeah. Before it sets, you steer it, but you steer it very fast, so you get a lot of small bubbles in there. And the idea by, behind that was it, um, when the LED lights on it, it will diffuse a little bit better. Also. And I thought it looked a little bit cool. Well, hold on. If I... Uh, t you can see there, it looks like a... I wouldn't say diamond, but... Uh, I think it looks uh, great. So, if we take it up to the light, you can see how it works. So, there you go. And the idea is also that uh, you can see it from all directions. So, great. Almost. <laughs> So I was wondering why in my code I had like <coughs> it says pick 16F uh, 684 for the moment and why does it says, say something else in the uh, diagram? There you go. Um, 676 and that's I think that was what I was intending to use so I have ordered those so I don't know if they work so I think maybe uh, that was what I had by hand that's why I say for the moment so so this is a bit prototype I think it's, it's not finished and uh, so yeah so if you look at this you can see you can see right away there's something wrong and you can see here you have the battery connector you have the charger connector well you can see here that when you put in the charger this one goes down this battery connection is then disconnected so I've done it the opposite that's why I had this uh, bridge here you know this black thing 
something. I was desperate. I won't, just wanted this to work for me. So it's not my best work. So <laughs> is that uh, when we looked at the circuit, I had a lot of uh, pull-ups on this uh, connector there. There you have the button, and here, here you have the thresholds. Yeah, so I think the idea was that you had like a uh, internal pull-up. So I have to figure out why can't I have internal pull-up. Maybe typical when you use PIC. Maybe other devices also, but with PIC there's always the problem that uh, uh, inputs are not always made equal. Some are more equal than others. So guys, I think I will just leave the mess here and I go to sleep. But actually before I go to sleep, maybe I should write down everything I said now. I have it on the video. And as you can see, for this project I have uh, design mistakes and uh, that's a cool thing because uh, everything... Uh, can you really remember this after three years? So like... Oh! Um, conflicting on the same line. When the programmer is, programmer is connected there will be two outputs, outputs conflicting on the same line. This was fine with the CD4051, that's a multiplexer, by the way. But not 74 HC HC4051. So I made the prototype and uh, it worked. And I had the same circuit except I used this chip. And then I used this chip when I get the uh, SMD because you can only get this one for SMD, I think. So I have dip for this one. So what I need to do in that circuit is. Uh, PC fan controls as I have uh, 12 drivers for 12 fans. 7, 8. Oh, I'm exaggerating. It's 8 actually. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and you have the multiplexers up here. So, what comes back from the fans, these 8 fans, is um, uh, you can see it's tuck. That's uh, like a pulse, tuck pulse which comes from each revolution or every quarter revolution of the fan. So you can measure speed. But then you have eight lines, so maybe that's a bit much to put into the microcontroller. You can have a larger microcontroller for that matter. And then you get eight analog sensing signals, which comes from... I don't know if you can see what's happening. Uh, I, here we are controlling the current is a PWM value which is then filtered twice to the adjustment pin and then you get a set fixed value and then this goes into the fan and comes back out of the negative pin and down to ground but before it goes to the ground it goes through this resistor so therefore you get a voltage drop and that voltage drop is then fed into the sense line so that's why, that's why I have um, uh, eight of them here into a multiplexer such that we can then just control this uh, A, B and C to select them. So, But what was I going to tell you? Yes, that was what I am going to tell you. There was uh, this IC P dot. This is a programming pin. This, you can see the sense pin. So what I'm going to do, take this one, put it onto the wire, then remove like this. Let's be taller changes. And then um, mistakes. The other thing was uh, I have to reverse engineer this board. And then. Um, Original, originally intended to use Big 16F. Port code and debug for. And there's my critic because uh, when you saw my design, you saw that I had uh, these LEDs which are uh, bent like a snake. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
let's put that on the top is the most important mistake of all fix charge input to Good night, good night, and see you later. We will time travel. See you in one second. Hey, what about the uh, Big Klaus technique? Let's see if we can try that. So he uses four fingers, I think. Two of them is to clamp down the device. And then he has... Hello there. In this video I'm going to repair my bicycle lights. I think he, he grabs <laughs> he grabs the uh, tin like this and then he puts the uh, unit in his hand like this so let's try that and I have actually not tried that yet so okay so I have to pre-adjust the length hello there and in this video I hit... let's see I don't know if I uh, will burn myself but then it will be a lesson learned Yeah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, you know when you have tin flowing like this, there will also be some sputtering of. Um... Hello there. In this video, I'm going to repair my. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So you don't have. You can't be afraid of that. So, uh, but I'm going to try it anyway. It does hurt a little bit, but well. I think I will uh, try that another time. So, so let's just clamp it down and get it done. I'm always very impressed by his soldering skills. So, this was also not a a easy board to solder on. So. And the reason being that uh, these pads are not. So, I was going to do programming on this chip to improve the firmware. So, I attached the Mini Pro so that I can try the in circuit programming port. And I managed to make contact, but then I erased it and then it wouldn't program. So the chip was blank. And I thought maybe I have broken this uh, Mini Pro. So what I did then, I took another chip and programmed it. And then read back the data and everything was fine. So the uh, programmer is fine. And then I started troubleshooting here and I couldn't find the reason why it doesn't work. So what I want to do is uh, try and go through the data sheet later when I make the next board and then uh, figure out what I uh, might have done wrong because um, the thing is this uh, dial here it's connected to uh, the data and clock of uh, the in-circuit programmer and uh, that may be a problem actually so so yeah so I try to get the middle position where it doesn't interfere but uh, I don't know and then you have the VPP which is the 12 volt programming or it could be 5 volt in fact and then at last you have 5 volt um, such that it can provide 5 volt but that 5 volt that will uh, interfere with this device so then I thought okay I will not connect power just 
take power from this. I tried programming it with uh, this connector here, but no. Only get the uh, over voltage message here, so that was not a good idea. And <laughs> another thing, this uh, colors. I had to figure out myself where uh, everything was because this picture here shows you colors. Shows you pin one. You can't see where pin one is. So uh, and you can see the colors here. They are yellow, orange, and so on. What you see here is yellow, red, black. There's no such sequence here. So <laughs> um, what I had to do was to put the meter on here and on chassis ground, and then see where that pin was. And then I knew that pin one was uh, three from that way, so and not four this way. So anyway, that was a pain in the ass. So what I'm going to do is uh, I added some notes. I'm going to add a programming connector, and also I'm going to add pin one mark on IC one because it's not visible which way this uh, chip goes. So. Hope you liked the video. I'm sorry for the mess. Uh, I have a lot of footage that I'm not including into this video because I really made a mess. So I tried to make an adapter to use with that uh, programming board. Then that went to hell. So I started just do the in-circuit programming and that uh, didn't work so well either. So yeah. Maybe this uh, one isn't so good for it. So, and another thing that went wrong, and I've done measurements, I can't figure out what it is. Now this isn't working anymore after I programmed it, and I measured at the analog input that it is getting the analog input. So maybe I'm on a firmware, firmware, which is old. Or I have debug firmware or something, which doesn't give me ADC. I don't know what it is, but it is getting the voltages it's supposed to, so I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.